All right, so we're cutting the legs out first, 22 and a half inches long. What I like to do is I, I measure and mark my first piece. And then since my miter saw setup is, I don't have a miter saw station that's got stop blocks and everything. So I make my first cut and then I flush these ends up and then clamp it. And then I push it to the saw. That way we're gonna get the same exact same size legs every time that's important so that your table is not wobbly when you get it all put together so make sure those legs are all exactly the same length so on the cut list you see two by twos on there and i don't i didn't buy any two by twos because i just ripped the two by fours with the table saw and all i'm doing is i'm going to rip them straight in half i'm just going to take it rip it right down the middle and you won't wind up with true two by twos they're actually about an inch and three quarters by an inch and a half that's okay, I'll show you what, uh, how to fix, or how that works whenever we put the, the uh, table together. All right, so we got everything cut out. I think you've seen him cut lumber before, so there's no need to see all that. Uh, what I got is two 23 inch two by fours. I cut one in half, the 23 inch. Cut this 19 inch one in half. And then we got two 19 inches and then the four 22 and a half inch legs. So now I got a pocket hole screw everything. I uh, should probably should have mentioned that to begin with. You're gonna need a pocket hole jig to do these. I mean, you can do them a different way, but that's how I do them. And I'm gonna drill the pocket holes, and then I'll show you uh, how everything goes together once that's drilled. Okay, so now we're gonna do pocket holes to attach to the legs. The legs don't get any pocket holes, only the aprons. If you don't have a pocket hole jig, I can recommend this one. It's a uh, Craig R3 get on Amazon for $30 I think it comes with the bit and then the uh, square bit you need to drive the screws with it's good but better is the K5 it's gonna save you a lot of time and I just mounted mine to a piece of OSB just to make it easier to, to keep in, everything in, in uh, where I need it so what you're gonna do is on your two by twos what I do is the, the cut side I'm putting up so if this was a leg, or putting this together, I'm gonna to put the cut side up. That's two, that does two things for me. That puts the flattest side up, so when your one by six is coming into contact with your uh, apron, everything is flows smoothly. It's, it's everything's flat and it looks nice. It also, it's the same thickness as your two before because you've ripped it in half, but you've ripped the two before in half, so you still got a, the same width here. You turn it this way, you're gonna have uh, overhang on each side and that's not what you want. So, just, just like that. So that's what it's gonna look like once it's together. And so that you don't see the screws, if, this, if you're looking from the bottom, your pocket holes are gonna be right here. And you're gonna, you're gonna do that. So what I do is I take the flat side away from me on the Craig jig. We're gonna stick that in there. I've got a stop block that this K5 comes with that I use all the time. I've already got it preset. I'm going to snap that into place. We're going to lock that down. We're going to drill two pocket holes on the bottom, on each side of this, the bottom of this one. And once that's done, on all four aprons, the two 19 inches, the two 23 inch, right in the middle, going to drill two pocket holes on each end of these. And then once all those are drilled, we'll put it together and I'll show you how to do that next. All right, so now what we're going to do is, is uh, pocket hole screw everything together. So we got a uh, your leg, one of your legs, and you got the apron. This is a 23 inch apron. And you see I've already got my pocket holes done. What I like to do is put a little glue on there. Again, I know it's an end grain, but it doesn't hurt either. So a nice flat surface you're working on. Get everything flush at the top because this is going to be the top of your end table. Looks like this. Well, your, your top will be on top of this, but you want all your seams to match up. So what you want to do is make sure the top is flush and then you're going to make sure that joint there is flush as it can be. Okay. So what I like to do is lay it down, something flat, and then I'm going to have another leg here on the other side, standing on in like that. So remember when you're putting this together that your 23 inch apron has to go between uh, the two before that's upright and your 19 inch apron goes on the end 
just like that. So, because you're gonna have three and a half inches here, and three and a half inches here, which makes seven inches plus this 19 inch. And then you'll have this 23 inch, inch and a half on each side if you're adding these boards, these two before, so everything gets is square. If you, if you mess up and go this way, then you're gonna have a short side and a long side of your table. So be sure that you're connecting the, like this. Because if you don't, like I said, you're gonna have an oblong table and then nothing's gonna work out for you as far as my cut list. Of course, you can adapt and overcome, but you may wind up using more lumber than you, than you uh, intended to. So just keep that in mind when you're connecting everything. I'm gonna screw all this up and then uh, show you on the bottom. All right, so now you got your table frame built. Now we're gonna put our aprons on. So I measure from the bottom of the leg, five and three quarters of an inch, and that's gonna to be to the top, the cut side of your apron. So you got your holes on the bottom. So measure to there, mark a line on each side. And uh, what I do is I'll take a clamp and I'll pull these two legs together just a little bit to hold this in place while I screw it down. And I'm gonna put the 23 inch one here, obviously, and then the 19 inch one will go between these two legs. And then we'll have our basic frame done. All right, so what we got is our frame. So we've got our aprons on. All with this one, I haven't gotten it on yet. Uh, I was gonna show you. So important to do is take your tape measure and measure from the top of your apron to the bottom of your leg on each, every one you put on, that, that way the tops are all exactly the same. So when you put your bottom shelf in here, everything's gonna line up nice. If not, you're gonna have lips and stuff you're gonna have to sand down. This makes your life easier. If it doesn't work out perfect, it's not a huge deal, okay? And then, because this is rustic furniture that I'm building. So what you should have on your frame is when you're measuring across, you should have around 26 inches, give or take a 16th or an eighth of an inch, both, in, in both ways here. Mine is exactly 26 both ways. So when you put your 28 inch top on, you're gonna have one inch overhang each way. So that's, if, if you've done everything right, you should be somewhere around 26 inches, give or take a little bit. When I put these aprons on, either the top aprons or the bottom ones, what I like to do is I'll screw these Craig screws in about halfway here and then all the way over here. What that does, if you go ahead and put a half here, if you screw it in all the way, a lot of times it's gonna kick, kick this out on one end or the other. So I'll, I'll put it in about halfway here and then I'll screw these all the way down and then I'll come back and put these back all the way in. So next what we're gonna do is uh, the top. I've already cut them out and drew my pocket holes. So I cut eight two by fours at, I cut them 29 inches. That way I can come back and trim these ends with the circular saw on each side. So we get everything nice and smooth and, and flat. If you go ahead and cut them to length, you just, you have to make sure everything is perfectly lined up when you're screwing them in. But if you, if you cut them just a little bit long, I left it where I can cut about a half inch off each side. And uh, so after everything's screwed up, what I'm gonna do is measure from here across to here and make sure, you know, see what the measurement is. And then I'll cut it to length this way. That way we get every, it'll be perfectly square. All right, so what we're doing now is cutting the ends of these tabletops uh, to make them exactly the same. Cause you can see there's a little bit of lip there where they didn't come out just exactly right when I was joining them together with those pocket holes. So what I want to do, what I do is I mark an inch in because I cut them two inches long, so I'm gonna cut an inch off each end, give or take. So I mark that inch, and I got me a straight edge. Now I don't have a, a straight edge, so what I do is just clamp a one by on there, and then it's four and a quarter inches. I know that on the shoe of this circular saw, it's four and a quarter inches from here to the inside of this blade. So that's what I did. So I just marked it over, a similar mark. And I'm gonna rip this and uh, get it all smooth. All right, now that you've got your top together and you got your ends cut and everything's nice and flat and straight, it's either time to sand it or you can do something with these edges. You you can leave them square like this. What I like, or you can round them over if you got a round over bit on your router. What I like to do is with the round over bit on the router just sticking out just so it gives it a little a little decoration there a little something you know this is kind of 
breaks the just the squareness up. And how I do that is when I got my router, I just take that roundover bit and let it stick up just a little bit. As long as it's the same on both pieces or, or you know each tabletop you make, if you're making a set, then you'll be good. But use a test piece to try it. If I'm staining my tops and shelves, I always use this Minwax pre-stain conditioner. It does actually do what it says it does. I've stained without it and it'll be blotchy. You'll see those dark blotches all in your wood. If you go ahead and use it, let it dry about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, I've already got it on that one. Don't have it on that one. As you can see, you put it on, it kind of turns it a little bit darker, but it'll dry. And then you'll, about 20 minutes, you'll put your stain on. Helps everything come out nice. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the, the shelving at the top. I've already got everything painted and stained with a clear coat on everything. So on the, on the boards, remember we numbered them so we know where they're gonna go. I've got pocket holes already drilled before I stained everything, and that's how we're gonna attach them to this frame. We're just gonna flush it with the top side. This and the top will be flush, and then the outside will go flush against that and we'll screw everything in. And I always put this piece on, then the opposite side piece on, and then I'll evenly space the other two have everything comes out right. On the top, several different ways you can attach them. You can pocket hole them. A lot of people don't recommend that because of the wood movement. Uh, you can use figure eights, which you just, you have to have a forcer bit or some other type of drill bit that'll cut you a small recessed hole. You don't drill it all the way and just drill it enough so that that sets in. And then you'll screw that into the, your frame and then you'll screw from the other side into the top. And then Rockler sells these tabletop fasteners for they're really cheap. And you'll have to cut a slit in your frame so that it fits in there. So if your tabletop is up here, the slit would accept that piece and then you would screw into that into the top. So uh, let's get all this put together and we'll see what we got. All right, we got our shelves in, we got our top on. What I like to do, you can get these sticky felt pads. Uh, I get them at Walmart. They're like $5 for well, 30 or 40 of them. They stick really well. That way if your customer is gonna put them on hardwood or tile, it's not gonna scratch their floors up with this, this uh, wood on the end. So let's flip it over and see what we got. So I, you can notice the tile there. I put that tile on the workbench so that Nothing gets scratched or scuffed. And these are pretty hefty. There it is. Look at that. Turned out beautiful. So I use a general finishes on the top. And it's just it's smooth as glass. It, is, it really is a beautiful piece. And uh, I've actually made two of these. I've only shown the one. But uh, they come out really nice. 